Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna take a minute to talk about a field test that you would do to understand when your wastegate opens. The reason why you want to know when your wastegate opens is because it will dictate how the boost controller responds from the electronic side of it. So this is just a quick mechanical test to understand where the wastegate opens so you know what to expect when you add an electronic solenoid to control the boost pressure. So there are basically two different types of boost control that you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be using either the boost pressure present in the manifold manipulated through a solenoid to actuate the wastegate, or you're gonna use CO2 pressure, which brings an artificially high amount of pressure to apply to the top of the wastegate, holding it closed. Remember, boost pressure on the bottom of the wastegate is gonna help open the valve. Boost pressure on the top of the wastegate is gonna help close the valve. In this diagram, you have an internally wastegated turbocharger. If you're looking to make the least amount of boost and you connected the wastegate line directly to the boost source, the wastegate would open as soon as possible. That would be the lowest possible crack pressure. Using a wastegate solenoid like the three port pictured here, it will leak signal from the turbocharger to the wastegate, causing it to open later at a higher boost level. In this diagram, you have a single three port wastegate solenoid where the solenoid is manipulating one side of the wastegate diaphragm. So boost pressure goes from the turbocharger directly to the bottom of the wastegate. That's gonna create your crack pressure. And then the solenoid is gonna be adding air to the top of the wastegate, holding it closed for longer, raising manifold pressure. In this diagram, we have a single four port wastegate solenoid. Now the four port wastegate solenoid is different than the three port in the sense that the four port is gonna be manipulating both sides of the wastegate diaphragm. So it'll be decreasing boost signal to the bottom of the wastegate while increasing boost signal to the top of the wastegate. A system like this will make maximum system pressure and have a very wide range of boost available. However, it comes at a certain amount of coarseness. Because you're manipulating both sides of the diaphragm, small amounts of wastegate duty can equal large amounts of boost pressure change. In this diagram, we have two three-port wastegate solenoids. Now take note that your computer will have to be able to run two separate wastegate solenoids to take this approach. One wastegate solenoid is on the bottom of the wastegate, the other wastegate solenoid is on the top of the wastegate. I can have the wide range that I was getting with a four-port with a fine control of a three-port, and I can stage these solenoids to not run both solenoids at the same time until I'm looking for maximum manifold pressure. In this diagram, we have CO2 boost control, where the crack pressure means a whole lot less because you have an artificial amount of pressure available through the CO2 bottle. So you have an uninterrupted boost source line going to the bottom of the diaphragm and you have CO2 pressure that's manipulated through the two solenoids present that are increasing and decreasing the dome pressure on top of the wastegate diaphragm. Now there's a sensor at play because you're targeting a dome pressure now. So if you have a five PSI wastegate spring and 15 PSI of dome pressure, you'd have 20 PSI of boost pressure present in the manifold. You still wanna know the crack pressure of the wastegate, but it's less relevant because you have an artificial amount of pressure available through the CO2 bottle. If you don't know when the wastegate cracks open, you don't really know what to expect from the system and you can chase your tail, which is what I was doing because I didn't put the wastegates on the car and I didn't know the crack pressure. And while I was at the racetrack, I didn't have access to the tools to check it. Um, so there I was. So this is just a very quick field test we're gonna do to show you uh, what the crack pressure is on a wastegate and how that influences the boost pressure you can make with your system. Most automotive shops and or technicians have a leak down tester. I'm gonna use that as my air regulator, which will allow me to adjust in fine increments how much air is going to the bottom of the wastegate. And the second is just a boost gauge to know how much pressure I'm applying to the wastegate. And the third would be a screwdriver that I'm gonna drop down into the top of the wastegate. I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie and I'm gonna know when it starts to move and that's gonna be my crack pressure. There are many things that will influence a turbo system's ability to make boost. Uh, the turbocharger size, the engine size, the wastegate positioning, a bunch of things. But for this, purpose in this test, we're just trying to understand when the wastegate valve starts to open. So I'm gonna apply air pressure, which will function just like boost pressure on the bottom of the wastegate. And I'm watching my tool to see when it moves. So at five PSI of pressure on the bottom of the gate, the tool has not moved. I'll put another pound in it, pound and a half or so. Uh, the tool still has not moved. Increase a little more, there it is. The wastegate starts to move between six and a half and seven PSI. 
Now, that doesn't mean this engine will make six and a half or seven PSI flat because it's a 80 millimeter turbo on a fairly small engine. So the wastegates won't be able to bleed off enough air. But at some point, this spring plays a critical role in how much boost pressure I'll be able to make with the style solenoid that I'm using. So this uh, car has two wastegates on it. One of them you can't see, it's on the other side of the header. So I'm gonna check that one also. But for right now, I know that if I'm trying to make uh, 30 or 40 pounds of boost to run in this car, I can't get there from here without CO2 or without at least the addition of a four port or two three port boost controller. But that's not what I have. I just have a single three port and I'm not really interested in having six or seven PSI on a car like this. That's too low. So I'm gonna have a minimum of say 20 PSI and I can work up from there. Now making a wastegate spring change is gonna require me to retune the boost controller, but I can manage that. But at least I know now exactly when the wastegate opens and I can check this periodically for system leaks on the wastegate. Uh, I've seen wastegate hats warp before and they'll start to leak air out and then that affects your boost control. You could have a diaphragm tear. You could have a spring deteriorate. So these are just things that happen in the field with a race car and you're gonna check them periodically because just like you check your boost leak test, you can do tests like this and understand how the wastegate will respond and when it will respond. So I have uh, two sets of wastegates that I have to uh, check the spring pressure in. And I'm gonna start with this set. Um, so you need a way to take the wastegate apart safely uh, for me, a drill press works really well because I can control the spring. If you start taking these screws out without holding it, you're going to create a mess on your hands. And there's a lot of energy that is captured in the cap of the wastegate. So for me, I'll use the drill press. I just got a chamfer bolt that locates in the hat and then I can safely um, take the hat off the wastegate and control the cap in the springs as I release the drill press and let it extend. So if you don't have a drill press or access to a drill press, it's quite a bit trickier. Uh, again, there's a lot of energy, so you stabilize it, you work slowly. If it goes to squirm, you know, there's a chance that you'll uh, have some trouble in your hands. So, that's that. We can put our new combination of springs in. You wanna be careful to not uh, pinch the wastegate diaphragm as you uh, reinstall the hat. So before you lower the hat in, what I do is I start a couple screws and then I take a peek at the diaphragm and make sure that it's clear of the hat. There are some wastegates, uh, external wastegates, that the hat is easier to pinch than others. But either way, you just want to be careful when you're going back together that you don't pinch the hat in the, uh, in the wastegate. Okay, all clear. So now that we've reinstalled the springs, we can get our bench tester back in hand and check the crack pressure on the gate. For you guys that are paying close attention, the gates that are on the Datsun are precision turbo gates. The gates that are on the liner are tile. Different brands, same procedure. So I've changed the wastegate spring and now I have a crack pressure of 24 PSI. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be making 24 PSI on base boost because you have the engine displacement, the turbocharger size, the efficiency of the system, the uh, pressure in the exhaust system influencing the valve opening because the pressure in the exhaust system is pushing on the wastegate valve. So there are, there are other factors in play, but I now know that the wastegate itself cracks at 24 PSI and I should be able to double that uh, without much trouble with the help of the the boost controller. So it's not an end all test, but you need to know the crack pressure just like you should be doing a boost leak check on your car before you go race it because it will influence the boost controller's uh, effectiveness to change the manifold pressure. 
So if you have CO2, it matters less because you can keep stacking pressure on top of the wastegate with the CO2 tank. But if you're just using the turbo pressure from the system to manipulate the boost control, the crack pressure of the wastegate becomes more critically important. So I've adjusted the wastegate spring levels to crack right around 20 PSI, which is gonna give me quite a bit more headroom if needed. Now, this car already went over 250 miles an hour with I think it was 26 or 27 pounds of boost, so it, it doesn't need much more, but it was riding the top of the solenoid and I didn't have any range of adjustment because the turbo is so large that it wasn't gonna make eight, but it, but it wasn't gonna make more than 30. So now at least I'll have more of a usable range for this combination of parts. If you're using a turbocharger with an internal wastegate, same thing goes with the diaphragm. You can pressurize the diaphragm and see when it cracks open and use that as a guideline to use your boost controller to manipulate the boost pressure that you're trying to make and achieve the targets you're trying to make. But mainly, this is something that you would do before you go to the dyno or before you go to the racetrack to make sure that you understand one of the main components of your boost control and how it's going to act and react in the real world conditions.